first weekend with eased lockdown rules is upon us. The weather is set to be reasonably nice, but policing bodies in England have been told under new guidance that they cannot arrest or even fine people uh, if they see them breaking the rules, because thousands of fines have actually been given mm. out. Yep, perhaps have. under these lockdown rules, it's much harder to police it. Uh, just last weekend, police were called to a street party in Nottingham, <clears throat> excuse me, after people were seen not complying with social distancing. So the question remains... <clears throat> wrong time right, to get something stuck in my throat. Yeah. Uh, the question remains, can the public be trusted and should the police have more powers to enforce the rules? Well, joining us to discuss this is the Police and Crime mm. Commissioner for Derbyshire, Haj al Dinsa. We're also joined by Dr Sholem Mosh Shogbamimu, lawyer, and political rights and women's rights activist, who thinks the police should have more powers. And also by entrepreneur True Powell, a children's spy from Birmingham, who thinks the public cannot be trusted to act sensibly. Uh, Hardyal, if we can start with you, because of course you're front line with this uh, as the Police and Crime Commissioner for Derbyshire. What is the situation at the moment? How, what powers do the police have in order to try and enforce social distancing? Well, it depends where you are, Ben. Uh, if you're in uh, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, the powers are very similar to what was when the lockdown was put into place. In England, they've been relaxed much further. So in England, the only thing that the, uh, the police can enforce is if people cannot go on holiday, people cannot visit uh, friends and family uh, in their homes, and they can only travel to outdoor spaces, uh, they cannot go to outdoor places in Scotland, Wales, but in England, they can go as far as they need to for recreation and exercise purposes. So how frustrating is that for you, that there isn't a collaborative uh, sense of approaching this and that actually the rules have changed in England? Because we've already seen, haven't we, that uh, yesterday uh, a, a white van that had travelled from Middlesex was going over the border to Wales and got sent back from the police in Wales because they turned around and said, you can't come here. That there's going to be this confusion. There's already so much confusion about what people can and can't do, where people can and can't go. And we will naturally look towards our police force to try and help control that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not helpful that there are different rules and regulations across the United Kingdom. And that will be particularly a problem at the borders. Say, for example, between England and Wales, if somebody is uh, living in England and they travel, they cannot travel into Wales for recreational purposes because the, uh, the police will enforce the rules and regulations for Wales. So it does make it more difficult for policing. But policing, police officers will be professional in the job they do. They will try to understand the regulations as they are and then to apply them. And the number one thing they are doing is that they are not trying to jump on enforcement. They are trying to be explaining, encouraging, and engaging. And the majority of people are following those rules. But when you relax lockdown, the potential for people who have been uh, isolated and wanting to sort of, uh, for their mental health and well-being, want to go out, there is a risk that there will be large numbers of people, particularly in uh, beauty spots or in uh, built up areas, um, increasing, and that increases the potential for the spread of coronavirus. Yeah, Shola, let's bring you in here. I mean, I know plenty of people who, uh, uh, key workers who have been stopped on the motorway, for example, by police asking them, you know, where's your letter? Where's your card? Uh, why are you on the roads? Of course, they can't do that now because you are allowed to travel uh, all the way up to the Lake District, even if it's four hours away, as long as you don't stay overnight and then you come back and it's a personal choice. Um, what do you think is the role for the police? I mean, should we... Can you trust the public to make, in general, good decisions about, you know, if you turn up to a national park this weekend and it looks pretty packed, turn around and go? OK, I think the coronavirus has demonstrated that there's no such thing as British common sense. It's British COVID idiocy. And uh, fortunately, it is being perpetrated by a small percentage of, of people, but that percentage is large enough to actually cause damage. I don't think it is the job of the police to enforce the mixed messaging of the government. Now, when the, uh, the police were given um, powers at the end of March, uh, it was clear, it was a clear mandate, 
And on top of that, what should have happened on Sunday when Boris Johnson gave his speech, he, he should have reinstated and reiterated what those powers are with the ease down of the lockdown. But what we've seen is that people have literally taken the easing down of lockdown as everything is over, it's time to come out. That I don't, I don't think it makes sense to put the police in a position where they are not going to be able to do their job. They are not going to be able to enforce any rules. And understand that legally, um, though, that the two-meter distancing rule, as far as I'm aware in England, is not a legal requirement. So what exactly is the government doing? As far as I'm concerned, the biggest COVID idiocy here is from the government. Now, if the, if the police is going to be given a mandate to enforce, that it has to be crystal clear. It has to be clearly understood what they can do. That is to be clearly communicated to the public and not only giving them powers, but ensuring that they can, they can use that ability effectively. Because I definitely want to avoid any racial profiling of black people or terrorizing of key workers who are doing their job. I mean, for instance, you just mentioned, Ravi, about people being able to go somewhere, just don't spend the night. How is the police going to be able to police that? How are they going to know that, you know, with, with this high increase of people who are going to be out there, that they're actually standing close to somebody they already live with, or that the older person with them is one parent or two parents? The mixed messaging is know. just awful. It's impossible to know. Um, True, let's just come to you. Obviously, you, you own a business. You'd probably like things, uh, you know, to pick back up. I was intrigued to know mm -hmm. that there is such a thing as a children's spa, actually. Uh, but um, you clearly run one. Um, have you had phone calls from customers sort of saying, listen, can we come in? Or are you worried, on the contrary, that you, even when the lockdown eases enough for your business to reopen, that the phone calls just won't come because people will be too afraid to enter an enclosed space where people are touching your face, your feet, your hands. What's your concern? So here's the thing. With our salon, um, we have parties that have been booked in um, and we postpone them because of corona and they're due to take place in July. And we've had customers very much call us and ask us, are we still going ahead with that, with that party? And following government guidelines and ensuring that everybody's safe, we're hoping that we can reopen on, on the 4th of July. Um, and put measures in place where we're protecting and, and safeguarding our customers from corona. But I, but I have to say, I'm with Dr Shola, the mixed messaging from the government has been terrible and it's caused a lot of confusion and a lot of grey areas. And actually, the main thing that should be consistent is social distancing and we should be trying our very best to adhere to that social distancing. And where possible, I believe that the police should get involved and police it, but that mandate does need to be given from the government. How will you do that in your business, though? It just seems impossible. In, a, in, in, in our business, it does. And it, it, we're looking at ways. We're looking at having barriers. Um, we know that we'd have to take off some of the treatments. That's, that goes without saying, because there's some treatments that we just possibly couldn't, couldn't do. Um, but we, we are looking at ways in order to try and mitigate the, the spread of this disease and, and try our best to meet this social distancing but it is going to be a very difficult task indeed. Uh, Hardil Dinsa, if we come back to you, I mean, it, obviously this is the major concern for everybody at the moment, generally, and for police forces up and down the country, but it's not the only crime that's being committed. How complicated is the job for the police at the moment? Because they're trying to police everything, not just the coronavirus, not just social distancing, but trying to deal with all those other things. And, and on top of that, there is huge pressure from the public for them to be involved in this as well. Yes, I mean, I think it's a really complicated and a challenging task for policing in the UK because um, domestic abuse, hidden uh, harm in terms of safeguarding, abuse of children, these are all uh, crimes which are still happening and they're still being responded to, as well as uh, other criminality. And then the clarity around how and what the police can do in the health uh, protection regulations is is difficult in, in itself because we, we cannot expect the police to police everything. Because as we know in supermarkets, uh, supermarkets are required to uh, uh, supervise and manage their space yeah. more and more as we come out of lockdown and it will, it will be more difficult as we go along. All or right. individuals and organizations beyond the policing to do their bit about encouraging 
enabling people to keep social distance, which is not enforceable by the police, by the way, and to make sure that they are protecting themselves and others. And every space, which is the responsibility of the other agencies, need also to be brought into effect yeah. and what they can do to supervise, yeah. encourage and explain how people can protect themselves. How they are, thank you. Them. Your signal is slightly breaking, so you might need an internet booster. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> my only advice this morning. Thank you to all three of you, to Shola and to True. And it's interesting that, let's just have a quick chat to Hillary about that, about, you know, we are seeing that, you know, supermarkets are managing it, or trying to, garden centres are managing it. You know, there's a, a local cafe that's reopened near me just for takeaways. People are, it's one in, one out. We are having to manage without, you know, the police being on every corner watching our every move. I mean, in terms of behaviour, what I found interesting was about the idea that you can meet your friend in a park bench but not in your back garden. Just explain that, because the SAGE committee has behavioural scientists in there, as well as scientists looking at the epidemiology of the virus, and the behaviour of human nature is different in private <laughs> and in your garden to what it would be in public where you know you could be watched. Yeah. The, the thinking behind this, and, and, and people have been questioning it, it, it is based on behaviour. As human beings, we're naturally inclined to be more intimate with those close to us. We want to hug them, we want to get nearer to them, and because we trust them and we know them, we forget about the distancing. And when alcohol is involved, and when you go through someone's house, the risk of transmission is much greater. So if we're meeting one other person outside where viral transmission is reduced anyway, and it's somebody we don't know as well as we know members of our family, we tend to transmit the virus less. And that is purely, I think, the underlying reason why we're being told to meet only one other member of our family who's outside our household, but we can meet other people on a one-to-one -one basis, provided we keep that two-metre social distancing. Yeah, so if you're trying to sell your house, you're not likely to hug your estate agent, for exactly. example. But you might hug, you know, a family member coming in to... You know, as we're hearing... I don't know, if you're, trying to, and, house, and, if and you're then, trying to sell your house right now and then suddenly you manage to get a sale, I think some people might be very tempted to hug their estate <laughs> agent. It's such a tricky time, isn't <laughs> that it? That is true. Like, oh, yeah. Now, I think what the people are being asked to do if they're selling their house is they're asked to, 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 to wait in the garden or, or, or to leave the house yeah. while... Uh, Which many do showing, anyway. You can manage that, can't you, logistically? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've just got to be sensible. The vast majority of people are sticking to the rules and being sensible. There's a small minority who are ruining it for everybody else. Um, and they're incredibly selfish because they don't understand that they, they might want to take the risk for themselves thinking that because of their age and because they're relatively healthy, they have no risk. But they're passing the risk on to other people who are more vulnerable and that's why they're selfish.